germs live everywhere and cover everything we touch. They're in the air we breathe, on the food we eat, the clothes we wear and the water we drink. So today, I'm going to test some everyday items to see how germy they are. The results may surprise you. OK, first up, a few introductions. Germs come in four main flavours. Firstly, bacteria. One-celled creatures that are able to survive on most exterior surfaces. For instance, our skin is caked in these Staphylococcus bacteria. But don't worry, they actually help us deal with cuts and scratches. Next, the viruses. This is Rhino. Here's a common cold virus. Unlike bacteria, they can only thrive if they are living inside a host life form. However, fungi are a lot like plants in how they grow. If you have ever had athlete's foot, then you know these guys well. Lastly, we have the protozoa. These germs love moisture and often spread diseases through water. If you have ever had barley belly, you can blame these guys. But according to Dr Nick Coleman, a senior lecturer in microbiology, the vast majority of germs are not to be feared. Almost every part of your body is colonised by germs. All the surfaces, so your skin, your mouth, certainly your gut, um, your nose. Most of your body has a lot of germs on it. Um, it learns how to distinguish between good germs and bad germs by being exposed to germs. So if you try and keep yourself excessively clean, that actually kind of backfires because then your immune system doesn't develop properly and then it actually makes you sicker, potentially. OK, so we now know that our bodies are designed to deal with most of the germs we meet. But to steer clear of the mongrels, you have to know where they prowl. And no one knows these characters better than sanitation expert Daniel Teal. And an important part of his profession is the testing of everyday surfaces for organic life. And this little piece of sci-fi gadgetry can tell us how many living organisms have infested a given surface, like this escalator. So there you go, Bianca, 19. 19, so what does that mean? Well, anything between one and 10 is a pass. It's reasonably clean. Okay, anything over 10? And below 30 is a caution. Okay. It definitely needs to be cleaned. Okay, anything over 30 is immediate action required. Uh, the dirtier it is, the more likely it is to harvest bad bacteria. We have to accept it. We all live in a dirty world and every day we are passing bacteria to each other as a result of the things we touch. In 2017, an American study identified over 100 different strains of bacteria on their average coins and bills. And when it comes to ATMs, the study revealed germs like Salmonella and E. coli hiding out on the majority of ATM touchpads. It's actually what? a six. How? How is that a six? I think they might have sanitised it with an alcohol wipe or something like that, which will kill the bacteria initially. Right, OK. But if so they you... don't remove that residue, it leaves the residue there as a catalyst for bacteria to grow again. Last year was Australia's worst flu season on record, with 654 people dying from the influenza virus. And when it comes to contagious hotspots, pedestrian crossings are consistently the germiest of all everyday surfaces. Whoa! So there you go, 32. 32. So that definitely needs cleaning and there is a good chance that that is harbouring some bacteria on there. Now this test will be interesting. How did you go? Well, I just swabbed the bathroom in there. OK. And the seat on the toilet. It's only a three. What? I'm so confused. Uh, not really. They're obviously, they use some pretty good chemicals in their cleaning program for the toilet. This is actually fascinating. Who would have thought a public toilet is actually 31 times cleaner than a crosswalk button? The logical reason? It comes down to how often we clean things. At home, for obvious reasons, we clean toilets far more than any other surface. So according to Daniel, the average kitchen likely has more germs than our bathrooms. So I've borrowed a friend's kitchen to test the theory. 68. Whoa. That's the highest reading we've had all day. That is the highest reading we've had all day. <laughs> fridge doors, everyone, you've got to clean them. Public toilet is cleaner than that fridge door. <laughs> I think the kitchen's somewhere where you need to be careful. Um, so just wiping them down, you know, just hot, hot soapy water is fine. That kills most sort of bacteria so and viruses. Not just water, it needs to be soapy water. Hot and soapy water is the best, yep. 
So if you're cooking chicken, you need to be especially careful because chicken always has salmonella in it, some level of salmonella. And so for the very last test of the day, Dr Nick wanted to show me some results he had just finished analysing of swabs from a random office computer in a very random office. The most exciting sample, though, was the keyboard sample. Um, so at first glance, this tells us there's faecal contamination on the Yuck. keyboard, which is pretty <laughs> gross. Uh, we need to interpret it with a little bit of caution, uh, but at first glance, it does look like um, poo on the keyboard. <laughs> so there you have it. Germs are all around us, good, bad and ugly. But don't panic, everybody, because Dr Nick has one last bit of advice. It's a very small minority of germs that will make you sick. And it, once you go down this road of worrying about germs, I mean, where does it end? <laughs> Every surface has germs on it, so at some point you just have to learn to live with them, I think, yeah.